Okay, so today we're gonna to do something a little different than anything I've done on here before. I've got a creative director friend of mine, Jason Corbin, joining me to answer a few questions about the relationship between photographers, directors, and ad agencies. Jason is currently a creative director at Lewis Communications in Birmingham, Alabama. He's also worked at agencies in New York City, Atlanta, and Charlotte, to name a few. And he's worked on campaigns for companies like Verizon, Toyota, United and Delta Airlines, the University of Alabama, and Valvoline. I was fortunate enough to have been able to help him out a little with some still images for those last two. So I'll just say, having worked in this industry for close to 20 years, I've come to realize that anytime we as photographers or directors can get the chance to gain just a little insight into the agency side of things, we need to take it. So enough with me talking and let's get to it. Jason, thanks for joining us today and, and giving us a little bit of an interview on the, the uh, agency side of the creative process when it comes down to uh, finding photographers and what you look for in a photographer and, and how things go from there into the uh, actual job itself. Yeah, more than more than happy to be here. But uh, you know, one thing before we get started, Jay, you you're forgetting something, brother. We gotta what? roll that intro. <laughs> All right, Jason, now that we're, we're back, uh, how would you say that you, uh, you find or source um, creative talent out there in the uh, big world that it is, the, the vastness? Wild, yeah, the big wide world of creative talent. Um, yeah, how, how would you say that you would find photographic or directorial talent? Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, nowadays, there's, as you know, all too well, there's so many ways to find different types of talent out there. So, I mean, first of all, I typically like to lean on my go-to folks, the people I've worked with in the past, you know, I guess it's been like almost 19, 20 years since I've been doing this and you kind of have certain, certain. Yeah, I see a little creative. gray in that uh, facial hair there. Yeah, it's a little gray. It's getting worse <laughs> up here too. But uh, yeah, it's like, you know, <laughs> it's, you know, there's always folks you want to lean on and you, you trust and, you know, you want to work with and it's kind of your subset of your people, if you will, creatively. Right. Um, when it comes to looking for new talent, you know, for me, there's, there's, there's all sorts of ways to do it, right? Whether it's, you know, looking for folks on Instagram or social media channels, um, using sources and publications like Ad Edge or, you know, even um, like Archive Annual Magazine or, you know, Com Arts, stuff like that. There's always, there's always new talent out there. They're always producing things. They're always sharing things. They're always advertising themselves, you know, self-promotion. Right. So I just got to keep my eyes open and, you know, depending on what, what creative we have on the table, if we need to bring something to life or act on it or produce it, it's like what, what, what is deserving of that work and what kind of talent can bring it to life. So how about like uh, your email marketing, like the e-blast that some photographers can send out and, or, and um, print pieces. Yeah, no, that's, that's very helpful. Like seeing it, honestly, like, you know, for creative folks, it's like when we get emails or direct mail pieces or even like, posters or any sort of creative collateral that comes to us from directors, DPs, photographers, illustrators, animators, whoever it is, like we love seeing that stuff. Like, you know, I, I would tell anyone out there, like, bring it on, send it, keep it coming because, you know, even though we're out there looking for things, sometimes it's that personal touch. It's like, it's a nice story that someone puts together and a nice piece of work that they send that you go, Oh, that's interesting. Like, right. They might not be right for the job that's going on right now, but I like that style. I like the way they do things. I'm going to keep them you know, kind of top of mind. Uh, and that's one thing I do is I just keep, a, I've had this oddly enough, old school, a pad of paper with pen and I've just written down folks that I've seen over the years and I've, I just kept it. It's always been in my drawer and I go back and I make notes about things and I kind of go through cool it. Though. Yeah. And I just add to it as I see people. So I just kind of keep it. Now, would you journey. say that's maybe like the first email or the, cause there's like a rule of thumb where oh, yeah. you don't re remember anyone's name or a company or something like that or a brand until you see it like what, five or six times, that type yep. of thing. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing something's impactful enough that you will maybe make a note of it, whether it's yeah. a piece or an email, I would think maybe would it be more than more so print than email just because it's something tangible. Yeah. I, I think the email can be a little more, I mean, Unless you're putting handwritten notes in every single DMP you send out there, which would be a nightmare. I couldn't imagine trying right. to do that. 
But I think the email is a nice way to have a little more personality, like show who you are as a, as a photographer, a director, DP, or illustrator, who, whatever your creative you know, shtick is. But then I think getting that direct mail piece just kind of solidifies like the creative level of it, right? You're like, oh, wow, it's a tangible physical piece you can hold. You can, like, you know, I, I have, you know, stuff all over my office where it's just like, this is an interesting piece that someone sent me. That's really cool. I hang it up and it becomes a talking point. You know what I mean? It's right. beyond just an email that you can, yeah, that's great. And then you delete it or whatever because you're, <laughs> You want to clear your inbox out. But so it's like getting both of those though. It's a nice kind of double ding where you're seeing both things and you're going, wow, that was really nice. I got a thoughtful email and some work. I got a really nice piece. I like it all. I'm going to keep that person top of mind. Okay. Yeah. So it's like an organized campaign from yeah, I mean, it's campaign. things toward yep. you that, you know, obviously we're selling ourselves and, yep. and what we can do and then trying to get, you know, your attention, that type of thing. So it's something, it's almost like, you know, the campaigns that y'all put together for brands type of thing. Yeah. Yep. Is exactly. that what we're doing? Yep. Um, how about like, um, you know, websites and stuff? Is there anything you, you know, particularly look for when you go to a photographer or director's website, like ease of use or like, you know, quick click in? Um, I mean, I know yeah. this day and age, it seems like everything needs to be just, you know, fast really snapping. fast. Yeah. yeah. I think to me, it's, I love photographer sites that are always categorized because I know if I'm looking, let's just say, for example, I've got, um, you know, an automotive campaign I've got to, got to, to create or whatever, you know, or I've got a concept that's an automotive concept. And if I go in there and I go, okay, I've seen this, this person, this, this girl or guy style, I go in there, it's like, boom, there's the automotive. I kind of just naturally go to that. Like I like their overall sense of style, but I want to see what they've done within that, you know, specific segment or market. That way I know like, okay, like I, I like what they do from a lifestyle perspective, but their automotive is like, eh, you know, I mean, or maybe it's vice versa. You know, I mean, like, ah, oh, their automotive is amazing, and lifestyle, whatever. But I don't care about that because I want their automotive stuff. So right. when it's categorized, it helps. Um, it's just easier to navigate. You know, you can dig into it a little easier. Plus, it's just from a search perspective too. I think it's helpful. Right. Being able to search, you know, photographers, automotive, or whatever it is, you're going to get a, a a better variety of things or an easier search. How about uh, the like level of clients that they've worked with before? Does that mm-hmm kind of leave an impression or either their client list itself um, when you are looking at a photographer's work, if they're sending you, you know, something from like a Coca-Cola or something like that, um, you know, other, instead of, you know, like some kind of a, uh, just maybe random shot. Like of, a local place. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that way, that weighs heavily too in the thinking of like who we're looking to select and or whatnot. Um, Cause a lot of times, you know, I mean, it depends. Like, at Lewis now we've got, we've got really high end projects with high end clients. And as we have, we have smaller local things. So, and not that anyone's, you know, deserving of each project more or less, but when you have someone who has experience working with larger clients, larger budgets, larger sets, more days on set, logistical things where it's like, you know, we got to travel here, go there, do this, do that multiple sets. Right. It's nice to know that somebody has the experience. So you go, Ah, like I'm not going to get up at three in the morning the day before the shoot and just be sweating bullets because it's like I don't know what I'm getting into tomorrow. Like right. you know, everything's like locked down, you know, because they they've done it, they've been there, and that's why you hired him to do that. So it's it's helpful to know, yeah. Well, it's kind of a, the thing you were saying about your smaller kind of local maybe clients. Is mm-hmm. that a good way for a you know photographer trying to you know get into the door there to maybe land a smaller gig with you know a um, agency like yours to you know maybe you come in there and it's a small budget type thing and, and a low profile type type of, you know, job, but then, you know, they knock that out of the park, they get to know everybody, that type of thing, yep. you get to know their personality. And then maybe when the next, you know, big fish rolls through there, yeah, you know, they could actually, um, you know, get some, uh, you know, get a little thought toward the, the larger gig just based yeah. off their performance on the small, yeah. is that a kind of a way to step up? Yep. That, I mean, that's, that's also a, a good way to break into it. Yeah. You're, you're darn right. Because like, if you, if you come in and you take a, you take a budget that say, let's just throw it out there. It's $25,000. It's a day and a half type thing. It's the creative. It's kind of like, not like I say it's subpar, but it's like, it's very easy to, to get through or whatever. And you come in and you knock it out of the park and everything's simple. You move through it. Well, the creative is great. Everyone's happy. You know, as a, as a creative director, I can go, Hmm. Okay. Like that was a really confident shoot. We got some really great work out of it. So next time when something comes through, it's like, I like, I like that person. I like their style. Let's have them bid on this larger project. You know what I mean? Right. Let's see what, let's see what they come back with creatively. Let's see what they come back with from a logistical standpoint. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's the thing. Let's, let's move. Cause the confidence, again, if you have the confidence in the person, a lot of times that outweighs the work. I mean, the work's gotta be great, but if you have confidence in that person and you know, they're good at what they do, it's just, it's a, 
it's just kind of a perfect combination. So, I mean, basically you would, you would say to approach every job as if it was, uh, you know, a $200,000 budget job, even yeah. if it's, you know, like 12, you know, 12,000. So yeah, no, yeah. there sure. in the yeah. future, you know, you could be working on a bigger budget uh, item just based off of how you performed on a lower budget, you know, yep. where you're not, you know, just kind of out there winging it, um, yeah. you know, because it is a lower you know, ticket item. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what we do creatively too. Like I look at projects where thinking like Coca-Cola, for example, you know, there could be times where you've got a smaller project for Coca-Cola and you're like, yeah. oh man, this is like a, it's a social campaign. It's not the, it's not the sexiest, most glamorous thing. But if you do really well, you don't know who that client knows. You don't know who they're right. sharing that work with. You don't know who in that building is going to see what you did. And there could be someone who goes, wait a minute, who did that? And that client wow. may go, well, this agency did, or this creative director did, or this photographer was a part of that. And then that could, they go, I really like that style. I want to talk to them. So, you know what I mean? It just, it's just, yeah, it's a good way to open the door and it's a good way to, you know, close the door for the future yeah. too. If you just yep. kind of um, half-ass. Um, yeah. If you're not, if you're nonchalant it. Yep. Exactly. Right. Yep. Um, Cause back in the day it was a lot of, um, you know, more editorial type work was floating around when you had, there were a lot of magazines and that type of thing. So there was a lot of more, a lot more flash that, you know, we had, Right on hand, and, you know, yep. as a photographer to bring to agencies and stuff like that. In this day and age, I think it's almost up to the photographer to create, you know, some of these types of shoots, and then yep. maybe use the smaller, you know, budgeted jobs to step up to the, the larger, um, you know, ticket items like you're talking yep. about. Yep, no, that's um, a good way to look at it. So let's let's kind of go back. So we'll go back to you know when you're sourcing a photographer, and then you get down to like your three photographers and do your your triple bid type thing, and mm -hmm. then you have your uh, creative call um, with the three photographers. And what would you say that a photographer can do to set themselves apart from the other two that are on that on that call? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's always about just its personality, its confidence, and it's bringing an uh, it's uh, bringing a level of work to the work to the idea that levels it up right like i love photographers and directors and dps that you know at face value there's a concept there's a script because it's funny it's like when you have a when you have whether it's a print concept or a shoot whatever it is or even a script it's like it's kind of on paper it is what it is but being able to work with that that photographer or director or dp and they bring something else to the table so that first right. call is important because it's like what are your real thoughts on this you know and i've had a lot of conversations with you know photographers and directors that's just like Hey, we love that idea, but like, what about this? And you're like, oh, wow. I never thought about that. That still keeps the idea intact, but it's like pushing it to another level, right? Like it's another added element or what if we added this into it? Or what if we did this or tried this or cast it differently? Or maybe we're not shooting on this background, but it's this background. So coming in with that confident kind of um, additive level of creative is always appreciative in my, in my mind. I always love that. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, I mean, you, you want to, at least for me, I want to, be thought of as someone that's going to bring more than just my camera to the job. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's collaboration. So anyone that's like is hungry and has the willingness to be collaborative. That's who I like to work with. Like no, that, it, that makes, people that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So. People that think it's their job. You know what I mean? Like it's not just their, it's their creative. Like they may have been, they're bidding on it, but they look at it as it's theirs. Like they almost created it and they crafted it and they want to really make it the best possible. No, that makes, makes a lot of sense. So, you know, say you land the job and that type of thing, you know, and you're, you know, moving to the work. So you have the shoot day and all. What, what is it that you're looking for uh, from the photographer, at, you know, on set and interacting with, you know, your agency um, people and then, the, you know, potentially the clients on set. You know, what is yeah. it that you look for and kind of key on um, during that, you know, where you would, you know, say that, you know, this is going really well, or you I mean, you give me the flip side too. This is, you know, yeah, going the bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To me, it's always, again, it comes back to the confidence of just, you know, knowing who the client is, knowing what the work is, knowing what the brand is, knowing what the crave team is and knowing where things need to go and what we need to achieve that day, you know, and, and having fun with it too. Like I always like working people like to have fun. Like right. I, I don't, I don't take much in life very seriously. You know, I like to, I want to do well and I want to work hard and like make great stuff. But to me, it's always about, you know, just let's just get out there and make some stuff. And so when a, a photographer comes on set or, or a director and they, they're in the moment, they know everything that's going to happen. They know what the, what the outcome's supposed to be. And they're coming in with questions and they're coming in with directives and they're, they're asking, you know, the client and the, the creative team, if everyone's happy and this is what we're trying to do. And then also just being buttoned up. You know, making sure that there's nothing, everything's just clicking. Like, 
that makes my job a lot easier knowing when you right. show up that morning. You know, if you got a call time of 6 a.m. and you're already tired, you'd probably been out partying too late, you know, after pre-pro and you're like, okay, <laughs> you don't want to get it there and be like, what is going on? You know what I mean? You want to have confidence knowing that like everything is set, right? going to be perfect. Like everything's moving, everything's thought through. So that goes a long way as well. Um, well, I mean, also if it's, uh, you know, if you're not having fun, then it becomes a job. It's a job. Yeah. And none of us want to have a job and we want to, you know, enjoy what we're doing. Uh, yep. you know, yep. and obviously creating is we wouldn't be here if it wasn't, uh, you know, so much fun to create something out of basically out of nothing. So, yep. uh, when you turn that into a job, um, that's where I think, you know, things can kind of stray off. And and then that's kind of where, you know, when I get to, to is like, you know, once you, cause I find it so important to not only, you know, nail that job, but then, mm-hmm. you know, create a fun atmosphere, have fun doing it. So then you, you're kind of on that list of, like you said, kind of your, um, your go-to list and, you know, yep. trying to find a way on to several people's go-to list in the industry so that, you know, when jobs are floating around there, then you, you're getting calls yeah. from yeah. people you've worked with in the past. Um, cause if you, you know, you're out there burning bridges, you're not going to be in business for very long. No, Mm-mm. no, exactly. So that's, yep. um, yeah, it's all about the, kind of it's the, a relationship driven business. I mean, it's like any business, you know what I mean? Like if I like work with you, you like work with me, we're probably going to work together a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah. Regardless of the talent level, it's just easier. You know, there's the best, well, of the best out there that just sometimes they get less jobs just because of who their personality is, you know? Right. Well, that, that brings me to another thing too, because we have, you know, marketing to agencies and stuff, but then obviously y'all mm-hmm. are talking amongst each other. So, I mean, there's, you know, um, recommendations that you would give, you know, you've got oh, yeah. creative directors and producers that'll, you know, contact you. And so referrals, I think would probably be almost, you know, better than, you know, direct marketing type of type of things. You know, get that third party um, selling. Uh, uh, you know, a positive note from somebody else in the industry, and that you know, oh yeah, that can stick you up there. But that's based no, that, on that uh, happens all perform. the time. Yeah, yep, that happens all the time. I mean, that's that's probably you know, again, going back to what I said earlier about like having my like the the core group of people that I lean on for photography, videography, whatever it is. When someone reached out to me and they said, "Hey, I got this concept. I'm looking for someone that could do it for." you know, around this budget, what are you thinking? I'm like, yeah, boom, boom, boom. Reach out to these three to four people immediately. You know what I mean? Just yes. knowing what yeah. the, whatever the campaign is, whatever the style is, it's like, yeah, these people will be great for it. Hit them up, see if they're available, you know, like go for it. Yeah. But uh, if you were to bottle up something, you know, some sage advice from, you know, a creative <laughs> director, just to kind of, you know, throw out there, uh, you know, for photographers that are looking to get hired, you know, what would it be that you would, you know, just short, concise, um, advice. Yeah. I mean, I'd say, I mean, I would honestly like put, if you can put some money into marketing yourself and and be crafty with it, you know what I mean? Use to me, like use social media as a guide, right? Like hook up with people, try to find creatives, even using like LinkedIn, sharing your work there, sharing your projects there, showing behind the scenes. Cause I think a lot of the, like we're talking about the personality of outsourced creative is like, Show show creatives what you're doing behind the scenes. Show us your personality. Show us who you are as a person. And if your work is already up here, then and we know that you got some you know some clout in terms of per, as a person and what you do and how you deliver on a personality level. I mean, it's just like a win win a lot of times. You know, we're automatically yeah. going to lean toward that person because it's like, man, they look like they're you know he or she looks like they're fun and they they'd be good to hang out with and they got great work and okay, cool, let's go with it. You know, let's let's try that. Um, I would just say get out there, you know, and just be yourself. I mean, honestly. And share the work. It doesn't matter what it is, you know. Right. No, I mean that's you know good advice for for anyone that you know, might be watching this. Just you know, kind of get out there, do your thing. Um, yep. You know, I guess you know, work on your style uh, and just put quality work out there. But then you know, on the flip side, you also need to be probably someone that someone like yourself is going to want to hang out with, especially on these multi-day yeah. types of shoots. Oh yeah, yeah. And then yeah, if you're hanging out with a photographer for five days, you know somewhere amazing or not amazing. I don't care if you're in Topeka or you're in, you know, Tahiti. I mean, it's like, you got to be able to hang out with the person. Right, you know I mean? yeah. like if you don't, if you don't like each other, it's going to be like, okay, this isn't going to work. Creatively well, you, also or per- have, you also have to creatively collaborate. Like you were saying earlier too. And yeah. Yeah. You got to be able to think through things. Yep. Right. Exactly. And create I mean, I think, and problem solve and, and that type of thing. Yep. And I think too, it's also like, I would, I would say like try new things too, like mix things up. Like I know a lot of like directors or DPs, photographers, they all have their like their one thing they do, but like you got downtime. Like we do that as creatives. We're just like, go, okay, I'm going to try something new. Something I've never done creatively or like write a different way or 
concept a different way or just kind of like broaden that portfolio or like if you're if you're a you know kind of like you are jay and it's like you're a photographer but you're doing video now right you're like dabbling in these things where it's like okay i mean or i'm making a fool of myself <laughs> no but you're but, but the thing is you're doing like really nice video where it's like a lot of times now the like agencies like mine and clients want like quick content stuff right, right. it's not like you got a day to make it they still got money for it you know they're still paying well and it's like hey i need to I need some stop motion animation type thing. And it's like, okay, well, I got this really good photographer who can take all these photos and bring it to life and tell a nice story. Cool. We're going to go with them because we don't have the money to hire like a director, you know? Right. But it's right. still going to be great because stylistically, they have a great eye for creative. They know what they're doing. They can build it and we're good to go. You know, like, I think that's, that's, that's been put a pressure that's on us creatively to try to get out of our boxes. Like, the days of being like, well, I'm just going to write a 30 second TV spot. That's all we're going to do. Like, no, you're right. not. No, you're going to write a six second ad and it's got to be a Facebook thing and an Instagram story. And you're like, oh my gosh, like, what are we doing? Just, well, there's so much, so many avenues of media these days where yep. you've got to hit. Um, yeah. But there's a know, buck to be made there. Stuff like that. that yeah. You know, it's yep. a, lot of, a lot of stuff to cover. Yep. Um, and then getting to, I guess, where we are these days, any thoughts on the industry as we're moving through this quarantine? Um, and, uh, and what the, we might be looking at on the other side. I don't know. I think right now everyone's just a little, they kind of put the, hit the, hit the pause button on everything. You know, I think there's things that are still going on, but in terms of full on shoots and moving forward, I don't know. I personally, I've still been pitching and pitching and pitching. You know what I mean? Like ideas and ideas and ideas. And even if a brief isn't coming in, we're just trying to find ways to help our clients and, you know, clients still have money. They may have trimmed back a little bit, but there's still opportunities out there. So, right. For us as creatives, it's like, where's the opportunity? What can we potentially make? And, you know, I think it's part of our job is to, you know, to filter things down into y'all's world, you know, and make sure that, because I mean, without y'all, we don't exist. Without us, you guys don't exist. So we all got to work together and figure out how are we going to make this thing work, right? right. So that's what, right. that's been my mindset is just, how can we go make things still in a time of, you know, you know, down, if you will, where things are kind of out right now, but in a way that we're all not struggling that much, but I think it's going to come back. I think, I think things have to be sold. I mean, life's going to go on. We still have to market things. There's still media dollars. There's still people are watching ESPN plus Michael Jordan documentary. So, I mean, there's still, right. there's still ads to be made. It's, it's going to come back. I think we just have to be a little patient uh, and a little more crafty about how we, we go about doing things and making things. So I should get out of the bed tomorrow morning and keep, keep you doing should. this crap. All right. And put your, all right. and put your shoes on or flip flops. <laughs> <laughs> take a shower <laughs> take a shower this, yeah. this um, quarantine hair don't care either yeah yeah i've been mean, had to trim it the other day a little bit but um, you gotta get that you gotta get that get that flow <sighs> I, <laughs> I saw someone <laughs> post that the other day no one's laughing now no i know right <laughs> i know um, um all right well jason thanks for uh jumping on here and and you know yeah some sage advice on you're welcome uh, your thank side you of the industry and what you look for in the photographer or director or someone that's trying to reach out to you, illustrator, anyone that's trying to reach yeah. out to you to, uh, to get work on some, uh, campaign yeah. level, um, you know, work. Yeah. So no, it keep it coming. So times. That works work. Keep work. Keep reaching work. out. It's yeah. You gotta work. keep working. It's work. It some work Jason. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I'm working on it. <laughs> work. I need some work. All right. No, well, thanks well, for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Everyone keep, keep fighting the fight. It'll, it'll keep coming. All right. Well, well, thanks, man. I'll uh, check yeah, back in with you soon. Okay. See work. you, man. All right. <laughs> I really can't thank Jason enough for taking the time out of his day to come on here and answer some of my questions. Man, he dropped so much good information, and I hope some of you out there watching can take it and put it to use. The creator to agency relationship is really the cornerstone to this business if you want to survive, and that relationship is always developing. And with what's going on right now, I think it's more important than ever for us on this end to learn what agencies are looking for and to do our best to adapt to it. If we don't, I mean, to be really real, going out of business is a real possibility these days. And that type of thing is what keeps me up at night. Okay, so let me know in the comments if you like this type of thing, and I'll see about putting more together in the future. If you did enjoy it, please take a second, hit that thumbs up, and subscribe for more content like this. You can always find me on Instagram and Twitter at Quants Photo. Please stay healthy and safe out there, and I plan to be here in the next one.